So in this video we're going to have a look at another really cool feature of Groovy and that's the ability to return back multiple values from a single method. Now normally when we want to return values from a method or multiple values from a method rather we end up in Java having to create a class for that. In other words a class which aggregates those values that we want to return back and we create a quick class which does that and then return an instance of that class back from the method. But Groovy allows you to do something much better. So let's just see this mechanism now. So let's first of all have a method which returns back, say, the dimensions of a box. So, so usually in Java, for example, we might have a class, say, I don't know, box dimensions, and then in there we'd have int x, y, and z, for example. So if we just check on this, don't worry about that because that's just because we don't have a main method, but that's fine because I'm just showing you the AST. Here we can see we've got those three data members x, y, and z and they each have the getters and setters which we've seen. So this would be enough to basically allow us to return back some box dimensions from a method. So let's create a method now. And we're doing this in the Java way first of all, just to show you how we can adapt it to a more groovyish kind of way. So box dimensions, let's just say calculate. I don't know, we don't need to give a pretty descriptive name because there's no context really, it's just a very contrived example. So here, if we want to you know, do something, do some calculation, then return the dimensions. So we do whatever calculation we want to do, and then afterwards we'd return back, return new box dimensions, and we can use Groovy's named constructor syntax to say x is 10, y is 12, and z is 30, for example. And we can also omit the return statement, don't forget, and because this is the last statement in that method. So now this just means we're going to return this box dimensions. So that's good. Now let's quickly create a main method to test it. And this is going to be a static method because we're not going to have an instance of a class. So we'll just do that there as well. Of course, if you're doing things like this and you're doing calculations which involve those data members in a proper program, you might want to kind of like take this method and push it into the box dimensions class to give it more of a behavioral kind of aspect of the class, where you basically put the behavior in the same place where the data is defined. But for this simple contrived example, we don't care about that, we're just demonstrating this multiple values returning syntax in Groovy. So if I create the usual entry method here, and then I should just be able to call calculate, and then we'd see some box dimensions being returned. So if we run that, here we can see box dimensions. Now to make it clearer, we can just put the two string annotation on here, just so that we can actually see what the box dimensions are. Actually, you know what? Let's put include names true, so we can see which data members correspond to. So here we can see x10, y12, z30. All good. Now the reason we created this is because we actually want to return back 10, 12, and 30. So Presumably we've done that because we want to access those individual data members in this method itself. So here we can use strong typing here, dimensions equals. So now we have a reference to dimensions. We could do dimensions.x times dimensions.y and this would be the area for example. So if we run this we can see here the area is 120 because it's 10 times 12. So that's maybe one calculation we want to do. Maybe we also have some other calculations as well. Calculation two, three, whatever. We have some other calculations. The main point is that in this method here, we wanted to call this method, calculate, and get back multiple values, which we could do something within this method. In other words, we want the x, we want the y, and we want the z. And in order to do that, in Java, we have to do something like this, where we have to create a class which effectively allows us to package up those three values which we want to pass back. And we have to go through all the ceremony of doing that just to be able to pass back these multiple values. Well, Groovy gives us a different syntax for that, which I'll get to now, but we can basically lose that. So we don't need that. So we have this box dimensions, which currently this method returns, 
So instead of it returning box dimensions instead, we can just put def, which just basically means that it's going to return something. And then instead of creating this object here with this name constructor, which we did before, we can simply just return a list. So now we don't need to pass in what the data members are. So we just do it like this to so just create a normal list, which we've seen before with the square bracket syntax. And now when we do this, we're saying that this is going to return a list of 10, 12, and 30, which is a normal list. The method itself, we're just using weak typing. We could in fact just say it's a list as well. We could say it's a list of integer if we wanted to, and but we don't have to do that. And don't forget here, we're trying to get the simplest possible syntax just to communicate the essence of what we want to do. So Groovy lets us do the minimum amount of code um, just to be able to achieve a task, and that's what we're doing here. So here we're passing back this list, 10, 12, 30, the elements. And then here, obviously, we don't have box dimensions anymore. But instead, what we can do is write def, and then in parentheses, write x, y, z. And so when we come to do the area, x should be available to us, and y should be available to us. So if we run this now, we can see here we still have this 120. So what's happened here, just to take a quick note about this, is the fact that we've managed to lose the class definition. We don't have to have a class now which packages up those values that we want to return, which is great. Um, we're just relying on Groovy's weak typing and the fact that we're passing back a list, which is also good. The only downside, I would say, is the fact that there's always a cost, by the way, to having um, a syntax as lightweight as this. And that's the fact that the actual semantics of the values that we're actually passing back, in other words, the names of those values, those are therefore outside of this method. There's nothing in this method which says that it's x, y, and z we're returning. And those then are pushed to the actual caller of the method itself here. So in calculate, we can see we've got def and this special syntax for multiple values, x, y, and z. So that's the only really downside to it. But as you can see, Groovy makes passing back multiple values from a method simple, quick, and effective. And I'm sure you're going to start using those in your Groovy programs sometime soon.